from you. Respect for you. I know, I know I usually drop one video, you feel me? But I wanted to bless y'all with three today, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I mean, just cuz. Respectfully, we got another video. I ain't gonna lie, I just stood on the rap, on the rap side, just cuz shit just kept popping up. So this says, says the four year stretch that killed rap. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. Rap definitely has dr dr dramatically or dr Dramatically or drastically, whatever it's called, get you know what I'm saying? I haven't been to school for like two years, so blow me off. Whoever got a problem with how I, how I pronounced it, feel me? It, 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 I forgot what I was going to say, but basically, rap has, has, a, rap has changed a lot from when it first started. You know what I'm saying? I feel like music before, even like before, before, like, like for me, it was to vibe out, dance. Now the music is used to manipulate, you feel me, certain genres, certain communities and shit. You know what I mean? They be knowing what they doing. You feel me? And even this another one right here, it's a good one. TikTok is about to kill the music industry. I might I might react to both of these, you feel me? So y'all get a double header. You know what I'm saying? Like I might react to the same video, two and one. You know what I mean? So respectfully, I even like this, but let's get into this. I mean, I he says, I just got a call. It should be noted, many record labels have deprioritized inside of rappers. The focus is now African music and Latin music. Rappers better stop being... My nigga. What? If niggas believe this, niggas is chatting, bro. I don't listen to this nigga, bro. This the same nigga I said Lil Uzi was gonna fall off. Then this nigga say Lil Uzi was gonna probably fall off in the next. And this nigga Uzi just dropped the Rockstar album. I'm not listening to this man, bro. Be boring and talking about the same over and over, chasing TikTok success and conversations. What Ebro is saying is the obvious. Understand, TikTok has ruined everything because it a, a artist know the song that blew up on TikTok is not their best song. But they start putting all their energy into that song. And it's only relevant for five seconds on TikTok. All of you are unoriginal. Every one of y'all is making the same thing. It's no new idea. I definitely agree with that, though. I definitely do agree that TikTok has wrong music, in a sense, because everybody, I don't know, niggas want success. Like, before it used to be, niggas cared about longevity success. And now niggas want instant success. And as, as long as it hits TikTok, fairly fast, it's going to blow up fast. You know what I'm saying? The faster it blows up, the more money you get in that short amount of time. So niggas don't be caring no more about the longevity of music. That's why niggas make just, niggas literally make present day music, like today music. Niggas don't think like, damn, how this shit going to sound in three months? That's why I feel like a lot of rappers probably don't like their music that they made that blew up. Like a lot of niggas be like, they don't like their hit songs. I could see why if it blew up on TikTok, nigga. You, nigga, you ain't really think about this long term. You just made some bullshit, just so it could go viral. So, I agree with that. It's all the same. It's all the same. A lot of them just be posting throwaways. They be songs like they can just hold on to and be I don't know why he's showing this. This shit fire. I ain't. I, I I don't I don't really believe that when Young Boy made this song, and I'm not even trying to meet right. I'm just being honest. I don't believe he made it on a ten of it's a TikTok song. Like I, I he probably knew like the thirty days strip. Like you know what I'm saying? You, I didn't think he would think that would be like thirty days strip. Oh, it's gonna go viral on TikTok. He probably like this gonna go viral. You know what I mean? But I don't know why he showed this though. Fuck, she talking about? Yo, Drake. Cole and Kendrick like 40, and we have nobody in sight to even fill the gap of the money. It looks like we just have a bunch of A-tier rappers, and it's everybody else who, they just get a club hit for like a couple of months and move on. She so definitely fell off. The artist no more. Like, I used to be like, I used to be like, I like, who the fuck is that? I used to be like, you know who he is. I used to play three or four songs. I'd be like, oh, that's who made that? Mm. Whereas before, when we was coming up, we identified with an artist. Now, take a guess who's falling off right now. Not a particular artist. I'm talking about the music industry. Yeah, music's over. It's over. Streaming, bro. It's over. Bop, 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 you know what I mean? And this is what I mean. G not going to be around 
Like, like not and not to be on no hand shit. You're not gonna be around forever, bro. Like, give it two more years, you're gonna fall off. Give it three more years. If sexy like rental chase, she's gonna niggas on the sting. Yeah, y'all niggas is here for right now. You can get your bag, but y'all niggas not gonna lie. Look at famous Dex. Oh right? yeah, like niggas not niggas you out there. Like, yeah, you could come back. Like you see, he came back. You from I like that song, but like nigga, you're not like you're not gonna. You know, you had your run. Like you're not a rapper, bro. You're just like a, a, a you're a trendsetter. Like I could something like they was in a, a phase or a trend that was going viral. Right like for me. Go and get it, but it's over. Most artists or most new artists, at least in hip hop, they'll be made by TikTok. Everything that goes up must come down, and hip hop is no exception to this rule. In the present day, whoa, it's extremely obvious. I think like five, five. He dunked. No glory. way. Glory. There are fewer and fewer huge records. Albums aren't hitting the way they used to, and fans are losing interest. For the past six months, all types of videos have been uploaded talking about how the genre is dying, and listing various theories for why this is happening. This isn't the first time people have felt this way about the trajectory of the genre, but this time, it really might be true. But in order to get to the root cause of the situation, current hip-hop- I'm gonna say this and I'm not gonna pause for a minute. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this one thing. I mean, I'm gonna give y'all a, a truthful answer on why rap is dying. It's niggas don't care about rapping no more. Niggas care about the image behind the rap. Before I feel like niggas just care about the rap. Like if you could rap, you could rap. Like damn, nigga, you nice. But now niggas care about who's rapping the lyrics. You get what I'm saying? Like a nigga could make a song that sound better than a young boy song, but niggas is gonna say being that is not young boy. Like you know what I mean? Like being that is not him. Niggas aren't gonna. Niggas are gonna follow with young boy, like nah, nigga, your shit whack. You know what I'm saying? Cause nah, nigga, like you know what I mean? Like niggas care about the status now and the image of who, like niggas don't even really like, like even Ice Spice. These are show Ice, but niggas don't even like Ice Spice music because of Ice. niggas like it because she got a fat ass. Like niggas really just like the image of her, like, like you get what I'm saying? Niggas don't even be probably paying attention to the music some I mean, the half of the time. They know what I mean, like. Even it's kind of sexy, right? Like, niggas just think she look good. She look like young. Some niggas like the little young thug type looking bitches. Like, you know what I mean? Like, niggas just like the images on the bitches. Like, the little, she wearing no socks. Like, niggas like the images and shit. And like to talk about shit. If, like, you feel me? Niggas care about the, in, like, nowadays, niggas care about entertainment more than the actual creation that they're making. Like, and that's even the industry. Up is facing, we have to look. Like the, the labels, years I mean. That have led us here. So, in this video, we'll take a look at the downward spiral mainstream rap has found itself in over the past four years. These videos do take a lot of time to put together, so if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please consider doing so. We'll start in 2019 because this was the last normal year the genre had. In Even this nigga, hip hop was in a good place. This nigga had good music. This nigga started doing some whole other shit. Types of artists and songs, seeing success. Pop, and huh? the fans were engaged with everything. Good time. Yeah, this, good whatever this is, right? I think twenty nineteen. All good times. Should, good music. By Baby, Tatiana by Blueface, Ransom by Lil Tecca, Bandit by Juice World and NBA Youngboy, and the most sold record in the history of music, Old Town Road. Outside of hey, Ten, yo, there were plenty of other huge records that contributed to the excitement rap had at the time, and these included songs like Shot of Flow by NLE Chopper, no comment. Act Up by the City Girls, Fallen by DJ Mustard and Roddy Rich, and Welcome to the Party in Dior by Pop Smoke. There was an exciting crop of new stars, including this definitely was a like good time Baby, for good music. Gunna, I ain't gonna front. Juice World, Megan Stallion, Pop Smoke, Roddy Rich, Polo G, Lil TJ, Nelly Chopper, 
and more. And hip hop was in an exciting space. TikTok had just started blowing up and the success of Old Town Road had proven it could be a powerful marketing tool. Listen, there's a good chance somebody's trying to hack your website right now. You got it. Towards the end of the year, the genre had experienced a tragedy when Juice World lost his life at the young age of 21. But besides this, 2019 was an overall good year. Take care, I get the with I got 2020 started off regular. The box by Roddy Rich saw crazy that nigga. success and dominated the charts. Early yeah, it's on. not even that nigga just tragedy. that nigga might as well the, the whole the whole fucking the sharks might as well eat him. Again, the whole blinking might as well the, whatever that shit the mattress might as well drop into the the purple spray or the purple water whatever. That nigga. Mute music career is drowned, nigga. Shit at the bottom of the ocean. What's what's the last shit? The 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 the, the Twilight Zone, the dark or the no the no, dead zone. Like his shit gone. This shit in the Marina Trench. Like nobody had nothing to do with that. I I don't know what happened, to bro. He struck and Pop Smoke lost his life in a Cali Airbnb at the young age of twenty. About a week after this, Lil Baby dropped My Turn, which did numbers, and to this day, is probably his best album ever. Yeah. Shortly after My Turn, Uzi shocked everybody and surprise dropped his long-awaited album, Eternal at Tape, which did well. Y'all yeah, remember, I was in the V when this dropped. I'm like, yo, he dropped and the tape. the beginning of people wanting the quote-unquote old Uzi back. Eternal Attack was an early example of a new trend. Labels were starting to implement a new strategy where they had artists drop an album, then two weeks later, release a deluxe album with an entire album worth of new songs to maximize the streams. Since 2017, streaming had become the number one source yeah, of drop 40 revenue, songs, Mom. And as the years passed, they had continued to try to figure out how to maximize the new model. Shortly after Eternal the Tape, the whole world was put on standstill when COVID hit, forcing everyone into quarantine. Quarantine was a weird time for everyone, especially wow. those who Yo. now found themselves stuck. Especially, I don't know about nobody else. I know I had mad fun during quarantine. Like, that was the best time for me, bro. No funny shit. Like, I, I had bad fun. Like, I mean, quarantine wasn't bad for me. I know some niggas are really bad because they was just not. Me, I was outside. Like, even during quarantine, like, niggas found a little hoop at a school area. They didn't take down. So, niggas was playing for bread. Niggas was really competing. Niggas was always going there. You feel me? Mind you, right, like, around quarantine, it was getting hot. You feel me? So, yeah, niggas are showing day. I ain't gonna lie. You feel me? Call it what y'all want. You feel me? I have fun. Stuck at home, unable to do shows. Some people took advantage of the opportunity to do new things with the large audience stuck inside. Tory Lanez started a regular IG live stream that he called Quarantine Radio. And Swiss yeah, I remember that. Timberland started versus a head to head competition between hip hop and RB artists that started on Facebook and IG Live and later transitioned to real venues. As far as the actual music release, albums from some of the biggest rappers during quarantine included Blame It On Baby by The Baby, Wanna by Gunna, The Goat by Polo G, High Off Life by Future, and Sugar by Meg Thee Stallion. Similarly to 2019, 2020 also had a lot of big hits. Lil Baby, writing off the success of My Turn, had two of the biggest records of 2020 with We Paid featuring 42 Doug and The Bigger Picture. Life is Good by Future and Drake and Rockstar by The Baby and Roddy Rich were also Billboard Top 10 hits. And the most talked about and controversy generating record of the year, WAP by Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B, also made a ton of noise. In 2020, 
Meg's name was also hot from the situation that occurred in 20... I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad Cardi B back on the market, man. You feel me? Give niggas like us a chance, you heard? No, not niggas like y'all, but nigga like me a chance, you heard? I don't know about wifing them, but you know. I mean, I can crank a little down, like, hit few, three, two, four, five times, like. 20, Meg's name was also hot from a situation that occurred with her and Tory Lanez, as well as two other people. Oh, yeah, you, you, don't, drag, you don't drag bitches over six feet, you heard? She said that Tory was responsible, and Tory said he wasn't. And the situation got tons of media coverage and was one of the biggest topics of that entire year. From 2019 to 2020, TikTok's influence had continued to grow, and the platform was yeah. I don't know where that nigga went. New path. I don't even know who that is. Record. New artists were popping on the regular, and the term TikTok rapper was starting to become a thing. Yeah, he More fell off. artists were also this taking nigga. advantage of the new platform to blow their songs up as well. This nigga dropped in the Grand Canyon. The rise of TikTok also came with negative side effects. What the fuck? And as a result of the way content was consumed, rappers began making songs shorter and more repetitive in an effort to potentially get TikTokers to make viral challenges. Yeah, like, not not for them. That's what that's one thing I say. Like, that's the thing I've really peeped. Like, I used to look back, I'm like, niggas used to make four minute songs. Why is it that now a song is a minute and fifty seconds? Like, nah, the people like niggas is like niggas wanna uh 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 accustom to TikTok. Like niggas just make a little hook, right, three bars and then hook again, and then it's hook four times and then the song replay, and then it's the same thing, right? You know what I mean? That shit, TikTok definitely ruined niggas' attention span, but I peeped that. That's why they, I feel like that's kind of why they implement the, you got to get paid to make, you got to make minute plus videos to get paid, because it, like, I don't know, it's probably something with the, like, I don't know how that worked, the new world order, I don't know, but somebody probably told them, like, my nigga, y'all niggas is fucking up attention spans, y'all letting, y'all got niggas making all this money off y'all, off y'all apps, because niggas just, Niggas is doing edits to music and just adding cap cut, getting paid for it. Niggas is literally just doing this. Million views. Like, when there's niggas out here like me that really is sitting there coming up, coming up with jokes, like, you feel me? Real shit, though, like, at least dance for, like, 30 seconds. Y'all niggas dancing for 15 seconds doing this. My nigga, what? ...to this song. Drake was one of the first big artists to be called out for this when he dropped Tootsie Slide. In late 2020, King Vaughn lost his life in the altercation with Quando Rondo in Atlanta, and Playboy Cardi dropped a whole lot of red, a long-awaited album that received mixed reviews. One of the more unexpected trends of 2020 was the extreme rate that podcasts began growing in popularity. Up into 2020, there were already a few established podcasts like the JVP and Drink Champs, but a whole new wave of pods joined in the period between 2019 and 2020. Oh, so Joe Bunn and Ben Fick on the podcast. Like worth the game. Hold up. 2019 and 2020, including a wave of pods joined in the period between 2019 and 2020 including shows like Million Dollars Worth the Game, Big Facts, and the Expeditiously Podcast. In 2020, the podcast space began taking off as more and more people began listening to podcasts and more and more rappers, athletes, and other types of celebrities began starting new ones. 2020 was an orthodox, but definitely not a bad year for rap. But 2021 would be the first major indicator that things were slowing down. We are always. Yo. And you'll always be my best friend. You think it's too close for me? And I know that shit right there was that fuck though. I'm just. Your name started popping up everywhere. Pooh Shiesty, 
had begun buzzing in late 2020. Office hit record back in blood. Yo, on my show, this nigga came out of nowhere. On my show, Kane Von died. This shit blew up. But mind you, like, it's weird, like, how, like, I think I heard the song. Like, Kane Von died, I think I heard it. Right? And when I heard it, I'm like, that shit fire. And it's like, out of nowhere, this shit just, like, like, it's just crazy to me, like, how it just skyrocketed. Like, the shit just shot up after, like. But mind you, I'm saying this, like, King Von died, you feel me? The song was already out. I'm, I think, yeah, it was already out. But it's just, like, it's crazy to me. I'm not saying King Von Dev got to do with it going up. But they probably do. But it, it's, like, it's just crazy how the song just started going up after that, bro. And then it's not this nigga just, like, an industry rapper. Like, the nigga came out of nowhere, bro, until that song. Dirt. By 2021, this record was everywhere, and Shy-C was one of rap's biggest up and coming stars. Another emerging artist during this time was Coyle Ray, who was buzzing off of her hit record, No More Parties, as well as the fact that she was an easy punching bag for internet trolls. Early 2021 also saw a deadly beef spilling over into rap. When Young and Ace spin a baby. Yeah, I, I, I remember this. I was at ATL when, when this came out. Who I smoke, dissing a ton of their deceased ops on a catchy pop sample. It's so real. My pops even asked me, like, yo, what you think about that? I'm like, nah, this is like, man, these niggas is bugging out there, man. You know? A combination that led to the song going crazy, racking up tens of millions of views, and becoming a viral hit. Early 2021. And then I just started a trend of that going on. But as the year progressed, an alarming trend began to emerge. Throughout the year, plenty of albums dropped from the biggest artists in the game, but the music wasn't hitting the same and fans weren't receptive to it. Polo G dropped Hall of Fame, Migos dropped Culture 3, and Roddy Ridge dropped Live Life Fast, but all of these projects were labeled as mid by the majority of listeners. Lil Baby and Lil Durk's collab album, For City Heroes, and J. Cole's mixtape, The Off Season, were received slightly better. Yeah, Voice of the Heroes was Tyler, the creator, probably had the best project of the year with Call Me If You Get Lost. A great body of music. This nigga's a Tyler Creator fan. That's all it is. I don't know. I, I, ain't even, I only know the song with Youngboy. I don't know. No other song for, off that shit. For me, unless it's on the radio, and I probably heard it. But I just don't know what it is. But... That's not even what I really wanted to say. Um, also, yeah, I, I don't, I, I ain't even, Jay? I ain't go out. Jay Cole dropped the other album other than that, um, that shit that, I don't even know, the shit with the red, with the red, um, picture. I don't know. If he dropped something, I didn't hear it. Or I, but if I did, I don't remember hearing it. For me, I probably, it probably is another tape that he dropped other than that shit. That was received well by fans. In July, the baby went to Rolling Loud and did this. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases. Then maybe five, two, three weeks, put a cell phone, light it up. Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking in the parking lot, put your cell phone lights up. Let's be real. He got the usual cancel culture treatment, including a bunch of blog posts and angry tweets. But yeah, I, I, really I, ain't gonna, I ain't get what he meant by that. Like, like, like I ain't gonna, like, he really think he did throw shots at, at homosexuals. Like, like, what, like, what, 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 like, what he mean when he said dick in a parking lot? Like, I don't know. Nigga just said anything. But I was like, literally just yapping out the mouth. Step further than usual, and festivals began removing him from their lineups, affecting his money. From summer to fall of 2021, one of the biggest storylines in hip hop for the entire year began to develop. Both Drake and Kanye announced they were dropping albums and then began escalating their beef. Kanye built the hype around Donda, doing listening events in several cities throughout the summer before dropping the album August 29th. Drake followed dropping Certified Lover Boy a week later. Despite the hype around these projects, most people ended up coming to the conclusion that both albums were underwhelming, just like most of the other music coming out in 2021. 
the trend of TikTok popularized songs continued, and things were so easy that even Soulja Boy, who hadn't been relevant for anything related to his music in over a decade, popped out with not just one, but two viral TikTok hits. The easy viral. Yeah, I think I ain't come out. <laughs> I don't got nothing to say about that, nigga. <laughs> I will say that. I don't know. I feel like music, like, certain, sometimes certain shit is preference. Like, the certified, certified Lover shit, I actually like that album a lot. You feel me? The Donda shit, I, I mean, like, I don't really listen to Kanye style of rap, but I know it was, like, a couple songs I was bumping consistent. Like, you feel me? That I liked it on there or liked on there for me, but certified Lover, but I jacked that shit. I feel like without the TikTok shit, I still would have jacked it. You know what I'm saying? I even, I ain't bumped it because of TikTok. I bumped it because I actually just like the tape. You know what I mean? on TikTok was allowing tons of new artists to blow up on a regular basis, but because there were so many, this meant that nothing was really sticking. There was just a rotating window Who the giving fuck countless is this? artists five seconds of fame, then moving on to yeah, the next. Fell off. So a unique situation was developing where despite it being easier than ever for songs to blow up, there were fewer and fewer new artists with the same excitement the baby, NLE Choppa, Pop Smoke, and others had just a few years prior. Given the fact that no new artists were blowing up on a major scale and none of the existing artists were delivering the way they did in the past, the charts reflected that mainstream hip hop was in a lull with Billboard Top 10 hits experiencing a significant decline from the previous year. Mainstream hip hop was clearly declining, but there was one artist able to cut through the TikTok noise and blow up on a huge scale. In late summer, an artist called Yeet started buzzing off a song called Sorry About That that went crazy on TikTok. Then he followed this up with an even bigger one called Get Busy. Yeah, I about to say, I, I heard the other shit, but this guy's shit. Oh, this guy's shit right he here. He's receiving a cosign from Drake. He was part of a new wave in a subgenre referred to as rage. And other artists like King Carson, Can Can, and Destroy Lonely were all new artists in this lane, blowing up this same year, seeing more traction than a typical artist on TikTok. What the fuck? Also, up in New York, Bronx Jill was blowing up with artists. I hate that nigga style. Also, nigga dressed wild, fruitful, mo. Up in New York, but um, yeah, I, I could see it being like some rock star rap shit, like. Yeah, I'm gonna say like music. The thing I like about music now, though, that I could say like I probably feel like I wouldn't like back then, is that. Music now has more of an identity to the person that makes it now. Like, like music now is like, not everybody just want to hear music for the lyrics. Some niggas want to vibe to music. Some niggas want to hear lyrics and vibes. You know what I mean? So like, I don't listen to these niggas. Like if I listen, oh, I don't listen to these niggas at all. But if I was to listen to Yeet, I mainly listen for the vibe or the beat and not what he's saying, but you know, to hear his, like, his beat and what he what he's saying, but not the lyrics, literally. Like, for me, that's why I tell you, you gotta be able to listen to all different types of music, cause all music give you different feelings and different moods. You know what I'm saying? Bronx Jill was blowing up. With shout out to the X Man. Fly. Shout out to loves- hold on, let me pause it. Shout out to the X Man. For me, shout out to the Bronx man. Where I'm from. Know what I mean? And deep thing doing numbers leading the underground scene. So overall, 2021 was a bad year for the mainstream, but it was good for a few underground niches. 2021 was also good for another form of entertainment that was just starting to touch the hip hop world. Streaming had been a thing for years, but it was something mainly for gamers. However, in 2021, people like Kai Sinat, Duke Dennis, Aiden Ross, Your Age, and Bruce Drop Em Off popularized streaming with a different demographic that aligned more with the audience of hip hop consumers. With the decline of hip hop, a lot of kids and teenagers who in previous years 
would have been hardcore rap fans were now turning to streamers as their primary source of entertainment and looking up to streamers the way kids in the past looked up to rappers. Aiden Ross's streams ended up getting so big that through 2021, he had a lot of the biggest rappers out lining up to come on and promote their music on his platform. Going into 2022, hip hop's mainstream drought would continue. We're told that success is all about making it on your own. And you know what I say? A lot of people not gonna like this 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 statement I'm about to say. It's clear as day. I show speed is bigger than Cobb, but Cobb gets more of a push. You know why? This is where niggas say, like, the sign your soul shit comes in. There's that. Kai is in the industry because he, he brings an asset to them, which is you react to our, our, you react to the, to the artist's music, you bring them up, kind of what Aiden was doing. For me, you give them more attention and their music more, for me, on a broad scale. Because everybody that watches streams don't listen to rappers as consistent. You know what I mean? So now you get them to, oh, they didn't notice. Because, you know, streaming, niggas watch streaming from all over. But niggas don't listen to rap from all over. Like, So, Ka, in a sense, sold his, you feel me? Because he's in the industry to promote music. Not because he's entertaining. It's because they want him to promote the artists, the artists and the music. Keep saying versus like speed. Speed is bigger than all of them, but speed don't like you see. He don't he don't react. He don't react to our. He don't react. I haven't seen him really. I don't, I don't see him react to our music, bro. Like no music, bro. But he don't get pushed. He's not in the mainstream. He don't get posted like that, bro. Unless this shit just is some outrageous shit. I mean, so yeah. <laughs> Shout out to streaming though. I mean, Gunna would start the year off strong, dropping Diaz Forever, a solid project with the breakout hit, Pushing P. It was a good project, but an example of how streaming had been continuing to affect the length of albums. Diaz Forever was 20 songs long by itself, with no deluxe included. The new length of albums meant that mediocre songs that wouldn't have made the cut in previous years were slipping through the cracks for the sheer purpose of increasing streaming time. Lil Durk's 7220 album was a perfect example of this, containing 31 songs in total, 17 in the original, and 14 additional ones on the deluxe version. Let me see. I'm gonna keep it a band. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I, I never heard this shit with Money Bag, yo. I heard, I fuck, I, I think I bumped Golden Child sometimes. Computer Murderers is my shit. I never, I expedite this letter, I, that's everybody's shit. I fucked with head taps. Did I fuck with Computer Murderers? I don't know, but I know a couple of these shits. Like I felt like smoking and thinking. I heard grow up, grow up, keep it on speaker later for me, like later and shit as time went on. Barbarian was decent, like you feel me. I ain't really bumped that a lot. I think I jack pitched me off at a point, but no, it was burglars and murderers. Yeah, it's right here. Burglars and murderers, ETS. Yeah, I fucked that Caprita murder. I don't think I really bumped that, but man, I yeah, thirty one songs is. I can't even say that because my favorite artist just dropped like 40 songs on that. Don't try this at home tape. So, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, nigga. I, and I said this about, and I say this, you feel me? Because I, I I keep it 100, man. Your man's young boy, right? He dropped Rich's Op, which I feel like was better than the Don't Try This At Home shit. So, if he would have took his time, and this is why I say artists, now nah, I get what he's saying. Artists don't take their time. He could have took... Three or four songs off of Don't Try This At Home, which I would have said, like, this, I'm going to try to remember the ones that was lit. Big Truck, Out Nothing, Like Madden, um, um, Cemetery Lifestyle, you can't forget that one. Um, 
That's mainly the ones, right? You feel me? There's like five, right? Then, bitch, let's do it the 30 days straight. That's what it's called. 30 Doug, Hurt My Heart, and Fuck The Industry, right? And probably like two others off that album. And off the other one, right? You make like a good 14, 15 songs. He would have had a perfect album. But nowadays, I don't know why niggas drop mad bullshit on one album with only three, 15 songs, 20, 30 songs with only five real longevity songs. And then, oh yeah, I'm going to drop another album with five, with 40 songs and five longevity songs. Like, what's up with niggas? In April, Pusha Ice-T was sentenced to five years. A deal that wasn't bad considering the possible time he could have received. I thought he got eight. still meant hip-hop would be... But yeah, that's not bad. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not bad. Just, early into his that's career. a lot of time missed in out of May, your career. The whole hip-hop world was caught by surprise when Young Thug, yeah, this Gunner, was crazy. and 26 other members of YSL this was mad unexpected in a RICO case that stretched back almost a decade. This same month, Kendrick returned from a five-year hiatus, dropping Mr. Morale, an album which was successful, but not at the level of his previous albums. Future also dropped. I even know he. I, know I even like know he Drake, dropped that. An album. I know this saw dropped. a large amount of success with the hit single "Wait for You" going number one on Billboard. 2022 also saw the rise of a few new faces. In July, a Memphis artist called Glorilla blew up off a song called F and F. Then, in late summer, a song called Munch by an artist named Ice Spike. Yeah, dude. He's, yeah. This this right here is where I feel like rap for females just, like, really, like, took a, like, big, like, transition of, like, I don't even know. It started blowing up on TikTok. It was initially taken as a joke, but it grew on people, and Ice Spice continued dropping and growing her popularity. In late 2022, Kanye went on his most career damaging rampage ever, which all started with the picture he took with Candace Owens wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt. After this, he made an appearance on Drink Champs, where he said that George Floyd OD'd on fentanyl and announced that he had problems with a group of people he referred to as the Jewish higher ups. He received strong backlash, but being Kanye, he doubled down on his stance and basically went on a press run defending his comments and continuing. What the fuck? And like what they saying? Like, I don't, I don't have to watch that interview. I don't even know if it's up. They probably took that shit down. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, tune into what Kanye was saying. I ain't gonna lie. All this time, I never tuned into what Kanye was saying. Like, for me, when he was going on that little run. I never really paid mind to it. You feel me? I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a definitely go and do my little research, see what he was talking about around that time if the clips and videos are still up. Because, you know, they probably didn't like a lot of shit he was saying. He probably, nah, we gotta take this shit down. He's giving out too much info. For me. To make more and more controversial statements that the media was having a field day reporting on. Eventually, things would end up getting the to the fuck? point yeah, this where he was stop, dropped from his abuse. Meanwhile, in late 2022, on the music scene, Baby that, dropped It's Only Me, his first solo album since my turn. And the album had an underwhelming response and was yet another example of an album optimized for streaming instead of quality. In December, Drake and 21 Savage teamed up to drop a collab tape titled Her Loss, which ended up being a very successful release. Also in December, yeah, I fuck with this tape. This is a good tape. It came home, and video came out about what he had admitted to get this deal. YSL is a music label and a game, and you have personal knowledge that members are still using the same crimes and burdens of the game. Yes, ma'am. I know, I know, I know that last. Whoa, you men snitched. Nah, that's snitching. I ain't go for it. If he would have just said the wise, the wise socials, I ain't know that last part. Nah. Your man's nibbled the cheese, mo. Nah, he snitched. Yo.
present when law enforcement officers stopped the vehicle in which you were present along with Jeffrey Williams for an high and a firearm. Fuck you, block it up. We don't know what the fuck he said. Fuck. Yes, oh, nah, Some people snitched. argued it was in a gray area that wasn't technically snitching, but the majority of hip hop labeled him a rat, and most of his former rapper friends unfollowed him and distanced themselves. The most notable being Lil Baby. The gun situation was one of the biggest things to happen in hip hop that year, and this was more evidence of the genre's decline in popularity. Meanwhile, the growing appetite for podcasts and streaming continued with the biggest podcasts and streamers growing at a crazy rate. In 2022, Kai Sinat took the place of Aiden Ross when it came to having the biggest rappers on his stream, bringing people like Blueface and Krishan Rock, Ice Spice, Lil Baby, and 21 Savage. In 2023, mainstream- But you know what I wonder though? I wonder like, why is it that like, Hot, like Aiden Ross was like a, a, a like like a, like a opening into that type of streaming, but Kai like took it to a whole nother level with the rap because he got more industry rappers, like the high high industry rappers. Like, so I'm trying to figure like, is it because the way Aiden Ross streams were? Niggas, it's like his style of streaming was not gonna work, or is it because Kai is like a dark man and it fits better as as him doing it, and he just got more success? Like I'm trying to really picture, like really think about why, because like I right, I'm gonna say this. I feel like it's I'm gonna just say a general skill. I feel like it's based off the way they go about their content. Aiden Ross shit was more on some sus shit. And I feel like a lot of niggas wasn't trying to go up there on knowing a nigga about to do some freaky weird shit to them on stream and humiliate them. Kai shit more like niggas fuck with the vibe of this of, of just the rapper being there. You could be more yourself and a little goofy. But Aiden shit was just like niggas like, nah, I'm not doing this as a man, bro. For me, especially like the big artists, like rap slump became extremely obvious. Very few artists even dropped music. The first notable albums didn't come until summer. In June... Yeah, hang on. He, he gonna live off this song for... for, 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 for he, he gonna live good off that song for a minute. Another album with way too many songs that came and went, like the majority of other albums from the previous two years. This same month, Gunner released A Gift and a Curse, his first album since he told and came home. In order to keep the fans on his side, he had to drop a banger, and this was exactly what he did, delivering a quality album with no features. In July, Travis Scott dropped his long-awaited album, Utopia, which was extremely successful, doing 500,000 units the first week. Besides a gift and a curse in Utopia, most of 2023's mainstream albums were mediocre. Ain't no funny, niggas not gonna lie, I don't really like that, I don't really... I don't really like that Travis Scott album. I only liked it that Drake song. I don't I, like, I don't know. My I ain't like, my attention span is, is I ain't like, I'm gonna make it short, but a lot of songs with five, six, seven minutes. I try to get into into I'm like, bro, like this shit mad long. This nigga's in the first five minutes of the song and then the features two minutes after, like, you gotta really like Travis Scott to wanna listen to him. For five minutes and then just to hear the feature. Mind you, you don't know what songs got the features on because niggas on they think they Kanye and don't want to show like, no, nah, no. Nah. I don't want to like Almost Healed by Lil Durk, Hard to Love by Moneybag Yo, and Set It Off by Offset came and went. 2023 also didn't see any new artists going nearly as viral as Ice Spice, Gorilla, Yeet, or Pusha Icey did in 2022 and 2021. Sexy Red? Right? The most viral new artist of 2023 was Sexy Red, oh, who began trending towards the later half of the year. By this point, it was undeniable that things were definitely in a slump for the genre, and YouTube channels began popping out left and right, talking about how hip hop was dying 
and speculating the true reason behind it. The answer can be seen by looking at the last four years. There is no one specific reason and a variety of factors have contributed to the decline. Up and coming stars got locked up or passed. Many artists began making music focusing on streaming numbers or TikTok success instead of quality music. There wasn't much innovation to the mainstream sound. And as a result, things began to feel like the majority of producers were making the same beat over and over and rappers were making the same song again and again. The trendy 15 second clip variety of TikTok made it harder for artists to build an actual fan base. And as a result, more artists experienced the trend of having five seconds of their song blow up for a couple of weeks and then being irrelevant in a matter of months. And as a result of all the music being cycled through on a regular basis, artists not making music optimized for social media struggled to cut through all the noise. All of this turned into fans losing interest in rap music. And while hip hop music has been declining, podcasts and live streaming have been skyrocketing, taking up the attention formerly reserved for music. Streamer. All right, so basically he kind of summed up what I was going to watch about the TikTok. I may watch that by myself. I ain't going to lie. I don't see, like, he basically summed up. and ba Not even summed up. He basically gave it a broad scale of what TikTok did. So it made no sense to watch this with y'all, feel me? But I will say this. TikTok definitely is a main point of ruining music. It definitely is a, is a key factor. But I also feel like it's just that it's just... It's like it's, it's like people just running out of shit to talk about. Like, realistically, music is all like we. It's all the same kind of things we all go through, but we all just saying it in different tones, and you're hearing it from different voices. Some niggas flows is good with it, but even the niggas that's whack usually be saying the same thing that the niggas that sound good are saying. You know what I'm saying so it's really just based on who you like at this point. That's what I say. Music now is based off popularity and who the person is. Cause I could say some fire shit and Lil Tucker's or anybody else say some fire shit. It's like even if my shit was better, niggas gonna go with the more popular person. And we could say the same exact bars, same flow, and everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's kinda like also a lot of people did die for me that made good music. So yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Music, music is definitely, but I feel like it's gonna get its peak again. You feel me? Music, I feel like it's anything. Like, even basketball, like, at one point, basketball had his little, like, where it was just whack. But I feel like right now, NBA is fake good right now. I got a lot of good players, teams is good. I feel like no team is really shitty. Pistons, those, might as well throw them niggas in the trash can. Them niggas might as well not even show up to no game. 30 losses, y'all niggas dead ass. Like, for me, but, yeah, I feel like music gonna get back up. I don't know how long is this? 48 minutes. Yeah, I ain't gonna waste no more time. Respect for y'all. I love y'all. I hope y'all enjoy the um the three uploads. You know what I'm saying? Definitely gonna try to start uploading a lot more on here. For me, get get really get on my YouTube shit. Reactions and all types of shit for me. But that that comes time to take your time with shit. For me. I love y'all. I'm out of here. Ah! I thought I was gonna scream.